Hey, what's up, everyone? Uh, this is a, a special day as I'm doing my first ever own podcast. Um, I do a lot of talking. I go on a lot of podcasts, but um, I thought, you know, I'd like to do my own. Um, funny enough, the reason why it sort of dawned on me was one, I've been observing a particular behavior in myself um, that has kind of opened me up to this, which is uh, I'm super stoked about. And the other is yesterday I was listening to a couple of podcasts. I like to listen to different podcasts and I started to observe um, that some people just do podcasts on their own. So you don't have to get another person on and, um, you know, you don't have to have another person on. And that's something I wanted to have the freedom to just talk about stuff that I found interesting because some of the stuff I find interesting, uh, I don't really talk to anyone else about. Uh, I will get guests on the show, some people who I find super interesting to just chew the cut on different uh, topics around the mind, body, energy, trauma, meridians, you know, um, hamster wheels, um, and and fundamentally understanding ourselves and freeing ourselves from the the control of the mind that's where this podcast is going to be focused on and it's going to give the listener hopefully lots of things to take away that they can use for themselves um but i was listening to these podcasts yesterday and there was one um one guy ariel uh who who does an mma podcast and he was just talking on his own and he was just repeating things again and again i thought shit that sounds like me i can do that <laughs> and then um I listened to these two guys. I didn't listen to that for very long, but they were just, you know, they were doing what I like to do, which is just talk about stuff that I find interesting and have a laugh. So uh, I just thought, Hey, you know, actually I thought a podcast was, you had to do like this very tight ass, not always tight ass, but you know, like podcasts where you arrive and you have to edit it and it's got to be perfect. And you're interviewing someone. Um, no, no, uh, I realized that podcasts can just be yourself. So I wanted to talk about something um, today, which I find really fascinating. And I've found it fascinating for a long time. In it's to do with elite athletes, high performers in anything, high achievers, let's call them, uh, and and how, in fact, you cannot train that. It, it is within you because it's a behavior. It's a deep deeply conditioned behavior and i'm fascinated by the fact that we admire those people and we hold them up as something to um, copy especially for young kids when in fact in my opinion in my experience they're deeply traumatized individuals who they have uh, they cannot stop their drive for achievement and i i believe that most people are deeply traumatized in this area and the the deep down, the, the reason why they're trying to achieve is they're trying to be valuable to others in, in order to gain love, belonging, and connection, an unmet need. And I will talk a lot about this theme, and you will see, I believe in yourself, uh, and I can see it in myself and all of my clients, um, is, is the fact that the, there are these deep programs within us that were created very early in life. I call them hamster wheels because they act just like hamster wheels. That's something I kind of a, a way of uh, helping my clients see their own behaviors um, by drawing a hamster wheel and showing the different type of wording or the different frame, different you know conditioned behavior around which they're being controlled. So. So uh, I I don't see many people talking about this and I see people touching on it in podcasts, uh, you know, in the news, I don't really watch mainstream media, but on, on you know, different athletes being interviewed and stuff, I see it being touched on. I wanted to talk about that today. So I saw um, Alex Volkanovsky uh, fought uh, Islam, um, I'm, I've never said his name out loud, so 
I am uh, reticent to say it. So Islam, uh, Khabib's um, prodigy, and he, he is a. I watched the fight. It was an amazing fight. Um, what struck me before the fight was one. It was a very risky move by Alex because he was putting his reputation, a massive reputation, on the line at eleven days' notice. It was short notice because the other fight uh, got injured. Doesn't please don't jump off because I'm not just going to be talking about MMA, but it, it's kind of an extreme sport and it shows the 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 deep behaviors very well. And so he, I saw him in the pre, you know, like the weigh in, and he looked really out of shape for this guy. I was like, wow, he uh, he looks like he's been on holiday for a long time. He looked flabby and not chiseled like he normally looks. Anyway, so the fight went and he got knocked out in the first round and, and it was a great kick but and and every all the the experts have said you know you can't you know just because he didn't have a training camp um you can't take it away from islam and stuff but for me it just didn't look like him and then what what was fascinating at, at the end of the fight was when he was interviewed he's obviously very disappointed but he immediately said please dana please ufc I want to stay busy. I need to stay busy. I don't do well when I don't have a training camp. I spiral. I spiral out of control. When I heard that, I was like, yeah, um, that is something I deal with every single day when I'm working with elite athletes or uh, high level clients is if they're not on the hamster wheel trying to gain achievement, if they're not on the right. So if you imagine the circle is in front of you and on the right side, there's gain and on the left side is loss. There are different wording. Ham there's different hamster wheels, but let's just go with a gain or loss hamster wheel. What he was saying is if I'm not trying to gain achievement, valuable, trying to gain so that I feel like I'm valuable, that there's some point to my life that I I'm loved like this addiction to gain, then I, go very deep into depression, which is on the left-hand side, which is deep loss. So immediately I thought, of, of, of course, it's inevitable that a man so driven and in such a hard sport, um, so driven to um, succeed uh, is because it's either he's on, so I won't go too much into the hamster wheel, but he's either jammed up on one side or the other. So he's either weak energy, energy wise to gain or weak to loss. So Alex Volkanovsky is weak to loss. So he can't lose. He has to continuously keep gaining. And that's why he's the best in the world. But it, he, he uh, opened up uh, really nicely and said, I, I really struggle. And I got this, there's an interview that I just saw a post-match. I haven't seen it before. I listened to it quickly before this. I'm going to play it. I don't know how it works with playing, um, you know, audio from different UFCs. So hopefully I don't get into trouble, but hopefully you can hear what I'm about to play. I get lucky. He's not somebody you should be taking a short notice with, but uh, I needed it. Again, uh, look, obviously a lot of people will say it's for the money and all that. Um, but it, you know, it was, it was much more than that. Like, you know what I mean? It, it is hard. Like it really is hard for, uh, athletes. Sorry. Um, I, I never thought I'd struggle with it, but I mean, like for some reason when I wasn't fighting or, or in care, fuck, sorry. I just uh, do my head in, you know what I mean? Uh, I needed a fight and then, uh, this opportunity come up and so. Uh, maybe next time I can share my screen and stuff. But just for now, what he was saying is he he broke down. He broke down. Um, and he said it's so hard for athletes. He said, if I'm not in a training camp, so if I'm not trying to gain, so he, he loses it mentally. And for me, that's absolutely uh, like what I see that – trauma so the, his deep trauma was coming through there that these hamster wheels are, are created early in our childhood and they come from trauma and so his his um he he was so he he's so reinforced his hamster wheel and he's so jammed up that he has to take fights to make him feel valuable 
and if he doesn't the pain is um like you could you you could see him he he would prefer to go into a fight with a one like a killer fighter and get knocked out them rather than stay at home doing nothing on sitting on the sofa. So there's a lot of pain driving that. And so um, my, what I believe is true is, and what, what I've seen is that elite athletes, the best of the best are the best because of their trauma that drives them. The hamster wheel that drives them. That is human behavior. I see it. Um, in many different professions. So there's this imprisonment that comes with the hamster wheels in the mind and they drip, they're created by trauma and that trauma, that juice, that gas that, that drives us. So I listened to uh, that struck me and, and then I saw other people pick up on it. So I listened to a podcast with Michael Bispink and Anthony, um, just give me a second, Anthony Smith. And Anthony Smith, you know, uh, Michael Bispink is more of a, a brash English guy. He's, he's really, I've, he's funny and he's insightful. And Anthony Smith is very intelligent and uh, he, he softly spoken for such a big dude who does fighting MMA. They talked about it and um one thing that struck me as ironic was that the show was sponsored by better man i think it's like a mental health app or something where you can go and if you're struggling mentally you can get advice and help and then michael bisping talked about alex volkanovsky I believe it was him. Maybe I've heard a few where they talked about it this way and they said, wow, he's like different level. He has to keep fighting. It's so he admired it. They were saying, wow, what an athlete, what a, what someone to look up to this guy who wants to keep fighting and keep. And then Anthony said very, uh, it was a wonderful little moment. He said, you know, I wanted to put my arm around him. He sounded really deeply in trouble. And he then went on to say, you know, I struggle with that too. I struggle with not fighting. I struggle with not having a goal. Um, and he, you know, sort of admitted to having uh, mental health issues um, around that. And and uh, Michael Bisping, you can always tell when someone's pretty much in denial is that they quickly sweep in under the carpet. Like they make... Um, comment not not really wanting to go into the mental health aspect i saw joe rogan several times i love joe rogan talk about um you know someone brings up trauma um i think it was tim ferris was on there and he talked about trauma or uh another i mean it would have happened several times and uh joe rogan's doesn't talk about that so he sweeps under the carpet and says it sort of changes direction with the conversation or, you know, so those things you, you can pick up very easily. If you, if you spend a lot of time uh, working with clients and you, you see sort of uh, defensive sort of maneuvers away from a subject that's difficult to deal with for the, for the person. So Anthony Smith was saying, you know, he wanted to put his arm around it. He's obviously struggling. So that's mental health issues is um, we need to, you know, calling it mental health issues. And it's almost like there's something wrong with them. Well, there is, but there's something wrong with their mind and it's the hamster wheels. So this is why the I, I'm going to be doing this podcast is people need to realize that um, it's not magic. It's not like this thing that we is really difficult to understand. It is actually quite simple to understand that we're conditioned um, to, you know, to achieve or we're, we're deeply conditioned and it's the conditioning that makes us suffer. So by seeing the conditioning, understanding it, then we free ourselves from it. Um, <clears throat> and, and just to say that, and, and I'll probably repeat this in other podcasts, but one person that really switched me on to that was firstly, I spent many years, 15 years working one-on-one -on -one with clients 
using more of a one and zero approach energy work and getting amazing results. But there was always people, some people that they didn't change, especially if there was an addiction or they kept bringing the thing back. And so I spent many years going, what's going on here? Why, why doesn't this stick um, with this client? And uh, one day I was looking, I was reading um, a book by Jay Krishnamurti and it dropped, it, the penny dropped. And I realized that, um, that you have, there's this uh, a deep level behavior inside of us, our self where all the humans can humanity's conditioning. So it's like the software on the computer and it becomes glitchy because it's created early in life. Well, he didn't talk about it when it was created, but he said the only way to resolve this is by non-doing, by watching, by observing firsthand. And I, I questioned that. I, I said, well, this is interesting. This might be something I've been missing. And I went at it and I questioned it and I tried it as I always do. And it just stuck. It, it fitted perfectly with my hamster wheel model and how to work with it. And then I thought some people found it a little bit cold, the way I was talking about it in, in terms of just watching your behavior. Um, and, and Krishnamurti is a little bit cold as a, as a, you know, as a man. He's, he's passed away now, but um, he, he doesn't look like he's going around hugging everyone. And then I watched a video by Gabo Mate. I've read a few of his books. I, I deeply admire and respect him. He's amazing. He's 80 and he comes across as being so youthful and, and um, in his, in his uh, playfulness. Uh, I really, and he's obviously got a lot of experience, which, and he gets results, which is something that I, I'm drawn towards. I want to see that someone can get results. So I'm kind of, I think we're moving into an era, a new paradigm shift where people just talking about um, information, not sort of teaching people like these gurus about, you know, you, you should follow me and follow this information. We're moving into an era where we need to be our own authority. And so anyone who asks you to follow them is uh, they don't understand that there's no way there. The only path is through your own self. So um Gabo Mate is also um of that inclination and he said something that really caught my attention he said anything that's not uh ha isn't a model based on trauma it, it, in his opinion it's a faulty a faulty way of looking at how um suffering and the mind and suffering and he he um he said something about compassionately understanding it's the compassion in the understanding that's important so i moved from just understanding to understanding that because it was these hamster wheels were created in early life you know before you're four years old there has to be compassion and that compassionate understanding is has been very powerful for me personally in in uh, changing my behavior and changing who i am and also with my clients and just remarkable results with my clients. So coming back to um, the, this, um, you know, so people are talking about mental health. Okay. Um, Alex Volkanovsky has really let the guard down and said, like, I'm, I really struggle. And, some people have seen it for what it is that he's actually, you know, he's, he struggles. And then this other fighter said that he also struggles and it just fits with what I see. I've been seeing for years and I'm going to be saying more about it because again, I think education wise of our children that we they're taught to look up to these people. And I don't say we should look down to them, but I don't want my children to become addicts. Uh, and spend their whole life uh, suffering, trying to achieve something that's not available. There's not, the hamster wheel is just a prison. So we have to teach children that, oh yeah, he's a, I believe in the truth. I think we should say, yeah, someone like Ronaldo, he's completely, there's trauma there. He's complete. he's never satisfied. There's a huge amount of control. There'll be a huge amount of suffering. He he wouldn't ever talk about it, I don't think. I haven't heard it. 
Um, uh, and then and coming on to this topic of, uh, um, you know, so there's this one uh, athletes are driven by uh, a compulsion to achieve. So, uh, yeah, it brings us on to another docu documentary I saw recently, which was David Beckham's. Now, if you want to see hamster wheels, there's a beautiful documentary to watch. I really recommend it. Uh, I, I I think he's an amazing athlete and he comes across as being super nice. Um, but the I saw it very quickly, but the, the documentary team sort of, I think, wanted to get into that a little bit more because by the end of the show, you could, it, they were obviously showing that he can't stop achieving. So he he's addicted and there's a control element that, and that comes out in his OCD, which is, compulsive uh, obsessive compulsive disorder and he looked very uh, sort of embarrassed and ashamed but he can't stop tidying and cleaning things but in my experience um i've seen a lot of athletes have a uh, of have a compulsive disorder to control because that's why they get so good at what they do uh, johnny wilkinson the england um fly half rugby fly half um i think he's uh his kicking record was just beaten recently. Uh, he was the best, uh, most points ever and stuff. And that be because he had obsessive compulsive disorder. So if you want to get good at kicking, you have to be compulsive about it. Yeah. Um, hopefully, if I remember, I'm going to talk about, is it possible to not succeed if you don't have uh, this terror, you know, uh, these hamster wheels driving you? I think it is, but I don't think many many children are allowed to just do something they really enjoy and they're not told what to do. Which brings me on to another um, point was I saw an Instagram post just the other day. I don't have my phone with me. I'll start bringing up these videos and I could um, you could listen to the audio. But he was saying, he was like, wow, um, T Tiger Woods, he was told what to do when he was a boy. And now look at him. He's world. He's the best in the world. Uh, Michael Jordan, he was told and forced told. He, he said told, but I just heard forced because told is the same as force, right? He's told what to do forced. And he became the best in the world. The Serena sisters were told what to do by their father and, and they became world champions. And he, I think he said someone else, uh, Michael Jackson, he was told what to do by his dad and he became the best in the world. And so the video was like this, wow, you know, we should tell kids what to do and then they'll be world champions as though that's good. Right. He's, he thinks it's really great. The, the achievements are incredible. I'm not saying they're not, but at what cost Michael, ja Michael Jackson, completely, uh, you know, addict, uh, deep mental health problems. Um, uh, Tiger Woods addict to, you know, huge problems. And uh, I, I'm sure Michael Jordan, I'm sure every, the Serena sisters, there's because they were forced to become valuable in the eyes of their father, they will never feel it's conditional love. The, the, the love of the father was conditional on the fact that they had to work hard. So they will constantly, they will never feel that love, belonging, connection that remember I told you about. So, uh, you know, that's being used as motivation for parents. I think it's deeply abusive, forcing children to do things, probably because the dad wants it. It's for the dad. David Beckham's father, re loving family, but he he didn't make it, so he wanted his boy to make it. So, you know, cl classic competitive dad. And in the video, David Beckham says it was never nothing was ever good enough. And so nothing is ever good enough. It, it's how we're conditioned. You have to realize that the way you're spoken to and conditioned as a child becomes your reality. And then you pull in experiences based on that. So you you get you become your father or you become your mother and and we're not free we are completely conditioned i'm going to keep saying that word but it's true it's so important this 
it, for me, this is the most important thing I can spend my time on. It's the greatest return on investment for my life is to be free from the programs that control me, that make me suffer. Um, so he, you know, David Beckham, he he admits nothing was ever good enough. And the dad admits saying that because he didn't want him to get complacent. So you have this man now who can't stop. He uh, and he can't stop cleaning because that's one of the ways that he can gain control. He can't, yeah, he can't stop cleaning. I've had other elite performers who uh, I work with a ballerina who would come to my house and um, ask, she goes, is that okay? And I say, yeah. And she tidy all my tins, make everything exactly matching spacing, all my glasses, everything before we started working. So, um, and, and one thing I would like to say that, I'm not, um, the, the achievements are incredible, uh, but it comes at a huge cost. Should we be educating our children, like conditioning our children to want that when it, it's for me really only possible, um, you know, if you're really badly traumatized, John Jones, he makes people unable or he he's become so value able able uh deeply you know he he spends he's so good at gaining he's the best in the world at, he's the goat in ufc but he keeps attracting so much loss and that's inevitable based on that hamster wheel yeah so i will in these podcasts i'll keep uh talking about the hamster wheels because everyone has them everyone needs to be free from them they the way we send kids to school um, forces children into hamster wheels and makes them worse. So uh, because children are not, not allowed to, to follow what they enjoy, then they're forced to do stuff that they don't enjoy. Then they see that they get more valuable attention from their parents and from teachers because they get good grades. So they go on the hamster wheel of gaining valuableness through grading and other people outside of them, and they lose uh, the 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 self directed love or enjoyment of things. So I'm sure that there are there's the um, Rototo twins in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu that were homeschooled. They they could do whatever they want when they were kids. So these two twins, two boys same age, um, had. Uh, um, tatami in their garage where they could practice Brazilian jiu-jitsu because I think their dad trained and they could surf so those are the two things they did all their life the kids are wonderful you know to if you think that kids learn at school it, that's uh, I, I think it retards learning I think if you allow kids to adapt to the environment they will learn uh, you know you put kids into school they immediately fall into the system of following the teacher and then learning secondhand uh, and they become dull and automated and and kids are allowed to be free they they follow their passions and they become very good very quickly at whatever they do so the rototo twins are now world champions in brazilian jiu-jitsu and they come across as being very balanced um but you know i, I don't know too much about their background and their childhood so, um, yeah, I looked at that David, um, David Beckham. Uh, I highly re recommend watching that if you want to see the the behavior in play. Um, I I've worked um, one of the first times I realized that this was a thing was I read many years ago Richard Branson's book, um, his autobiography. And when he sold his music company for the first time, you know, and he that was a huge achievement. Um, everyone was partying and he was deeply unhappy and started working on something else. So I, when I remember reading that many years ago going, what, what is that? Why, why couldn't he, if that's what he was working towards and he achieved it, shouldn't he be happy? No, because you, it's not, you you think that you're going to get connection and love and belonging by achievement, but you never do. 
and it, it's like a drug. You have to then go back into the hamster wheel and try and create more value. David Beckham with his new football club, um, Richard Branson with, you know, he just never stops because that he's conditioned, he can't stop. So we have all of these addicts who can't stop doing what they do and they earn a lot of money for doing it. And we tell other kids, be like them. You know, it's, uh, for me, it's it's absurd and, and crazy, but, you know, there are many things, right? Um, many things in this world that are absurd. So when, when um, I do see these people, I watch my own behavior. Uh, I have hamster wheels that are, I am, com there's a compulsion to follow them. And I, I've been working diligently every day on observing them and freeing myself from them. Uh, I don't know if I ever will fully. Uh, Gabo Mate, I saw him being interviewed the other day. Um, he said a joke. He said, I, um, it, like he, he just explained the story that he arrived at the airport and his wife hadn't turned up. She had forgotten and he was angry for three days, like hurt because it triggered his abandonment. And he told the story like it was many, many years ago because he's such a guru now. And then he said it was three days ago. And I thought that was very truthful and brave and shows that if you have a guru that's coming across as though he's perfect um, and he's not talking, he he's, he's teaching everyone that he's enlightened, that's a red flag. It really is a red flag. And because we all have a mind and that mind is conditioned and, um, you know, maybe there are people who've um, like seen everything, but right now I doubt it. And these guys that are sitting in a cave um, or they're monks that have no kids and they're just chanting all day. That's not living. That's uh, nonsense. They're not, they're just following uh, um, someone else's path. They're not understanding themselves. You understand yourself in the fire when you have kids and you you, you got to work and you you got a wife and relationships and things go wrong or you know there's people there's things around you going wrong. That's how you learn about yourself. So I always say that um, MMA um, the the work that I do is a little bit like mixed martial arts in that. There's no bullshit. You're in the cage and it's in the cage that you learn about yourself instead of being like doing a martial art that you just learn pretend moves and you never fight. You don't really, you know, you can learn all the katas you want and if someone punches you in the face, that all goes to shit. You, it's not real. So when it comes to the work that we're talking about here is there's it's first principles you, you have to observe your behavior to know about it. That's fact. When you know about it, you'll see that something happens and another door opens. But you don't take my word for that. You have to do it yourself. Um, there are different techniques for working on, you know, mind, body, spirit. Um, and I think the work that I do that I learned from Dr. Cam, or Cam Ewan, um, Energetics, uh, ones and zeros uh, there's first principles there because it ties in with all the other eastern philosophies of one and zero uh, yin yang uh, strong or weak and so we for me it's always coming down to the truth is this does this hold up to really deep scrutiny ones and zeros do you can feel it you can test it yourself i have a course free one week course on um, the first week of my meditation os school it's on my website, school.com forward slash masterless meditation. There's a free course there if you want to sign up. It's free. And um, yeah, I'm going to, I've got a webinar to give soon. So I'm going to uh, stop talking about this now. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm going to, obviously, this is my first one, so I will get better. I want to put my my thoughts, my own authentic thoughts down and I think podcast is a great way for me to unravel what's going, all, all the different things that I'm seeing. Um, 
I'm writing a book. Uh, I've I've started writing a book on healing, or it, it's a book focused on um, the body, energy, and trauma, or trauma and the mind, the hamster wheels. So those are the three main themes of the book. And I'm working with a really talented editor. And it's just the start of working on this, but I'm super I super excited about that book. Um, hopefully it will get picked up by a, a big publisher in that space. And we can start changing a lot of the, for me, unhelpful talk about mental health and um it and and all sort of the there's nothing you can do about it yourself you have to go see someone you got to be strong and talk about it with other people yeah fine but there's it's much more um there's much more truth to be found and people just need to be explained how to use their computers so understand that there's a manual for working with their physical body the the computer and how to resolve the software glitches that we have in our mind. And that is um, the work I'll be spending the rest of my life doing because I'm fascinated by it and I love working with people on it. So if you ever do want to, uh, if you ever want to book a session with me, just drop an email to support at robbrinder.com and floor chain, my assistant will get straight back to you and arrange a time. And what we will do in the session is, find you tell me where there's a problem that you're suffering with or you're not achieving or you, you you're struggling and in one session i'll show you why and what you need to do about it and and even in the understanding in the session is is going to change you so you'll come out of that be the greatest for me i honestly believe the highest return on investment of anything you could do if you're in if you want to change so on that note I'm going to go and just chill before my webinar. Uh, if I'm going to post this on a, I don't even like on a podcast thing. And, uh, and then I'm going to be doing more, um, more podcasts like this. And I, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks so much for listening and thanks for your time. Have a great rest of the day.